everyone. Welcome back to another Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Cardwell. And today we're going to have a fun, easy time on the on the Creations because we're going over a set review of the new set. Yep. Uh, it is it is a wild set and I am super excited for it. Trevor's super excited for it and Cardwell's super excited yeah, for it. Yeah, uh, it seems like, as I was told, old school Force of Will. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're back to legacy magic for those that know what that's like. Yeah. But hey, um... Before we get into it, guys, we just remind everybody that we do have a Patreon. The link will be down below. Go check it out. It actually it only takes a dollar to give us some love and support. We greatly appreciate it. As well, I want to inform anyone that doesn't already know about it, we have produced a Force of Will Grimoire, an app that is for deck building. So go check it out on the Google App Store. It is super fun, super easy to use, and you have a deck builder again. Yep. Like, because everybody loved the compendium, and when it got shut down or stopped, we wanted something else, so we made one for y'all. Hopefully, we get it on iOS very soon. We're working on it as best we can, but yeah. it's not there yet. Yeah, as the time of recording, we are still working on that. Yeah. Also, as of time of recording on that, hopefully this set will be in there. It, we're just waiting on a couple more things to get it going in there, okay? Yep. Um, so, this is going to be a much more chill video than normal, but we're going to go over the set, talk about what we like of the cards, like... We're gonna go over the card, how it works, and what it does. Yeah. And then we're gonna talk about how it, how we like it, if it's good for like standard play, draft play, or not good at all. Yeah. Really. Um, and since we're brewers, we're pretty much gonna see random cards that no one's gonna like and probably love them for sure. Yeah. And we both have very different views on cards. Oh yeah. And so you'll get you'll get to see it as we go. Uh, it will be color broken as for each color, so like white, blue, black, red. If you want to get to a certain color and see what that is about, you can go do it. The link it's down in the comment section uh, or in the description. And lastly, it's just gonna be a fun set, and we're gonna yep. see what it does. And it's a big set and a lot of reading, so you know, excuse my English for <laughs> yeah. sure. And for reals, my boy Galapis is back, yeah. and I can't. I'm so excited. All right, so let's delve into it, guys. First up is Gil Lapis, our boy, and the first thing that they've done is eroded it to, not eroded, they changed it to where Energize is just a thing now. Thing. Yeah. So every ruler, it doesn't have it on the card, but they still have it. Yeah. So he is uh, black, and he's got the uh, Energize, and his Judgment is a black, black, and a moon mana, so it's going to be a little hard to Judgment him, because there's not very much that makes moon, but it is but what it is. But it balances him out, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, he says, whenever a darkness regalia enters the field under your control, choose one. Then, if the regalia is world ender, choose one again. again. Keyword. You, you can look at the top three cards of your deck, reveal a card from among them, and put it in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your deck in any order. We're good. Yeah, pretty always. Name a card. You gain limit break. Name of that card. And I'll explain that in a second. Uh, and then next is you may pay the attribute cost of minions and moon arts with any will. So... In all, in, in all honesty, I think he's one of the best rulers of the set. I mean, there, there's three really good rulers, don't get me wrong. They're all three fantastic in their own regard. I personally like Gil Lapis, so I'm excited to use him. Yeah. Um, but the main things is the limit break. So the way it works is it's like it's like Energize. You get a little like item, I guess you want to call it, Yeah. that is just limit break of that card. And all it means is that card gets extra abilities. That's literally all Limit Break is. Yeah, it basically unlocks the potential of that card. So you're like, Limit yeah. Break, even Gil Lapis, <clears throat> you put it on the side, you write it down for your opponent or whatever, so you remember. And then when this happens, then it has that extra ability. Yeah, and he has his own Limit Break, so if you want to get it, you got to make sure you call him as a card. Yeah, and the best thing about the, the Regalia part, it says one and one again, so therefore you can choose two names for one Regalia. Yeah, if you need to. Yeah. Uh, and so, when he judgments, he is a 12-12 flyer with enter, search your deck for a minion and put it into the field. If you do, you gain limit break, name of that minion, shuffle your, your deck. So it is, that one is for that minion. Yeah. But, so be it. It works. That's a free limit break for you. And then next, his limit break, and limit break, you get everything under it. So yes. if you don't have limit break, all that text is it's like, just, not there. Yeah. Um, so it says, this card gets plus eight, plus eight, and precision. So 2020. 2020 flying precision. Uh, tap, destroy target resonator until the end of game. You may play all God's art abilities you played this game in additional time. <laughs> and then God's art, pay a black and a moon. This card gains resonators your opponent's control. Gain minus four, minus four. Oof. 
So yeah, you just get to kill their board and kill all their board. Yeah. And it died. Great. Yeah, thank you. And I get to do it again? Solid. Yeah. Really, really ridiculous. So he is definitely going to be a really fun ruler to build around. He's probably going to be one of the hardest ones to build around correctly. Yeah. Just because the limit break stuff is a little crazy, but I think it's going to be super fun. Uh, he's definitely going to be one to watch out for. Yeah, the easy to play, hard to master kind of thing for him for sure. Mm -hmm. The next one is uh, Dark Alice. She has the attributes of white and black, so that she has the energizer of that. And her judgment is white, black, black. When the darkness a regalia enters the field under your control, choose one of the uh, one of them. And if a regalia unknown mother goose, choose one again. Uh, gain two light crystals, gain two dark crystals. Now, that doesn't sound exciting, but it can get out of hand yeah. really quick. She does a lot of stuff with crystals, and it's kind of wild. Yeah. And it's kind of weird, like, the art in the front and the back are completely... Thankfully, they're different nowadays, and this one looks super good. Yeah. So she flips over as Dark Alice. She has Drain and Bane. Yeah, Drain Bane. So enter, search your deck for a fairy tale resonator and put it on the field, then shuffle your deck. That can probably get out of hand real quick. You can pay one uh, white, banish a two light crystals, target entity gains eternal and barrier barrier until end of turn. And then you can play pay a darkness, banish X darkness crystals, destroy all resonators with total cost to X. So that's super cute. Yeah. And really super good. Super good. And with the God's Art, uh, Mother Goose Rising, it's a white and a black, so it's super simple. Put any number of target fairy tales and or shadow resonators with different names from your graveyard to your hand. Pretty good. Yeah, so she's Pretty gonna good. be really, really annoying just because she has don't don't hurt my dudes on as a free ability. Yeah. Like you just pay a white and you lose some crystals. Cool. Whatever. I mean, great. You're gonna make a lot of crystals in this deck, so you could just be like, hey, pay white, she gets eternal and barrier. No. <laughs> yeah. The fact that it does double protection just <laughs> yeah. in case they try to board wipe and then kill it. You're like, yeah. no, don't don't do any of that for yeah. sure. And she's a 12-14, I forgot to mention. And I one I personally am not a fan of the new text art box, but the fact that the white and black is on the attack and defense, that's pretty cute. I yeah. just saw that. Yeah, no, it is. I really think she's gonna be really strong too. Like, yeah. like I said, all three are gonna be really good. I just don't know. I don't know how they're gonna compare to the others. Like they each have their own place. Yeah. So far their power and toughness is way stronger than the oh, other yeah. ones, which is ridiculous. Good Lord. And to have a 12, 14 with Drain, and Bane is Yeah, stupid. I mean, she got a booty, so... Oh, okay. yeah. Next up is Magna, the creator of the Regalia, and he is the last ruler of the set. And he is white, red, blue, green, black. <laughs> yeah. And his judgment is white, red, blue, green, black. Seems fair. And you may have stranger resonators in your deck. You may not have more than one copy of any stranger resonator in your deck. Yeah. So, he doesn't get to have stranger deck, but you get to play with all of them, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, of course, uh, for later, you can't have them in sideboard either. Yeah, that's the rules for him. But I mean, just have all the strangers in your main deck, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. And then when he judgments, he turns into a twenty twenty. Is you know why not? I mean, I give him that because you have to pay five colors to judgment. Yeah. Search your deck for a stranger resonator and put it into the field and shuffle your deck. God's art Valhalla. You pay one of each color. Destroy all other non stranger resonators, non magic stun entities your opponent controls, or yeah, just destroy general. all of them. Your opponent cannot play spells or abilities until the end of turn. So his God's Art is probably the strongest one in oh, yeah. Cluster right now. Because it's just like, hey, let's kill the board and you can't do anything about it. It's like it's like a time wipe that also <laughs> destroys all of their board. Yeah, yeah. Just kill your things. Kill all the things. Yeah. And uh, you can't play spells. Great. I, I think he's one of my newest favorite uh, rulers ever. Like, yeah. this guy is just he's, so silly. He's pretty wild. He reminds me of like the final bosses in fight games when they uh, like have all the abilities and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty. He's definitely going to be another one of those build around dudes, but he, I think he's going to be pretty good. Oh yeah. Now we'll actually get into the set for white, and the first one is Intimidation. It's one white, insta cast, or quick cast, and prevent all damage that would be dealt to resonators this turn. So dealt by dealt by resonators this turn. So yeah, so if they swing in, you pay one white, they don't hurt you. Yeah, it's a fog effect. Hey, yeah. cool. No, Bye. thanks. Uh, it, I, I can it's, see it being used, but it's not going to be like crazy. Yeah. It'll be used in like a control deck more than anything. Yeah, in, con in like massive control, definitely with the the ruler we just went over, and it it's definitely okay and limited, just a one up. Yeah. 
Uh, next up is King of Kings. He has two white and one for a fairy tale resonator. He has a 9 9. Other fairy tale resonators you control get plus 4 plus 4. Banish a light crystal, discard this card. Target J resonator gets plus 4 plus 4 until they turn to draw a card. So, all of Dark Alice's dudes are all about the uh, King, Queen, and Jack, like all the like yeah, card yeah. games and cards, which is kind of neat. Like, it's cool flavor. Yeah, yeah. And this dude is just a really good lord for them. And if you have the ability, like, Anything that you have extra use out of, so you can banish the dude and discard him from your hand. If you get an ability out of your hand with it too, yeah. makes him automatically better. And yeah, and the cantrip too, like to be able to do that. Yeah. Go for. Yeah, very powerful. I would if you build an Alice deck, definitely. Yeah, you're definitely using this dude in Dark Alice because he just makes your fairy tales bigger, yeah. and you don't care. Like, great, thanks. Uh, build around. So build around and limited. He's a bomb. Yeah, for he's sure. He's super bomb and limited, especially if you just draft a bunch of fairy tales. Next one is Lineth's Wish. That's a one white quick cast. Put target stranger resonator you control to the, into your stranger deck, then choose a card from your stranger deck at random and put it in the field. That's pretty cute. Yeah, so I've, if you've got a stranger you don't like, you can switch it. Yeah, it happens a lot during our brawls for sure. Yeah. And I just really would rather want that. Yeah, the uh, the storyline for this is pretty wild because Lineth lost a guild in this fight and she became part of his army, I guess you would call it. Yeah. And she's going to Magna to get help. But I mean, I like her new looks for sure. But uh, and this also saves a stranger when they try to kill it. So that's also a good thing. Yeah, you just swap it out. And yeah, you you're might. like, nah, don't. Yeah, don't touch it. Definitely a good card to use if you're playing anything that has free mage art abilities. Yeah. Uh, next up is Mage Jack. He is one white fairy tale for a four four, quick cast and drain. Great. <laughs> uh, enter, gain two light crystals. Banish a light crystal, you gain two hundred life. Nice. This guy's good. Yeah, he's a really good one drop. He's a really good little dude just because he gives you crystals for Dark Alice. Yep. And he's got quick cast and drain. And like, great. And with that Lord, he's an 8 8 with drain for one. Yeah. That can just come in and snuff a dude out real quick. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I would. Unlimited fun and build around, I would put mm -hmm. him in for sure. Depending on what the other cards are. Uh, the next one is Return of the Soul. It's three white and one. So totals for destroy non-stranger resonators. So for what's his name, Magna? Yeah. That just play this card. Also, this is a sword art and a mage art. So other rulers can still use this and get to be able to cast it easily because both sides get to use it. Exactly. You just gotta worry about the non-stranger parts, but yeah. Yeah, whatever. Like Let's four mana kill the board. Great. This can be also a second art for uh, Arya, your mm -hmm. second board wipe, because most of your strangers will be on the field if you gods are, and then you board wipe them yeah, with all their non-strangers, and then done. Yeah. Definitely a really fun build around card. It's definitely kind of a dangerous card to play, kind of, because you lose your stuff, but not really. But definitely, we'll see. Uh, next up is the stranger, and the strangers did stay the same as the, like, the old ones. They yeah. just they, they wanted to leave them that way. And he is uh, Richard Richise, the swordsman. Yeah. He is a stranger, he is one in white for a 7-11 uh, quick cast. Enter rest target resonator, it doesn't recover during the recovery phase as long as this card is in the field. I like this guy. So that dude's pretty good. Yeah. So for two men, you're like, hey, don't do anything, and uh, I'm big. Yeah, I'm, I'm a 7-11. Yeah, like, thanks. Maybe that's what he's looking for on his adventures. Yeah, he looks like he's looking for something. Yeah, yeah. he's looking for that Slurpee. Uh, definitely a pretty good stranger to use. Like, he's definitely one to think about. You don't have to use him because there's a little other ones that are yeah. decent, but he's pretty strong. But I mean, even when you're using Magda, and just he's in the deck. And if you draw him turn two, he's a 7 11 turn two. <clears throat> yeah. Tap your one drop. Next one is Short Injures Cry. It's a one white. In I'm getting all these one white quick casts, every <laughs> single one. All right, it's a major as well. So remove target resonator, res target rested resonator from the game. If this card was awakened, draw a card. Awakening, banish a light crystal. So it's a cantrip and it gets rid of a dude forever. So probably one of the best one drops printed Ed, ever in like any card game I've played because it, it literally kills any uh, target that doesn't have barrier. Yeah. All it has to be is tapped. That's it. That's literally all it has to be is rested. And guess what? You tap when you attack and block. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. You dude, get out of my way. Get, get out of here. And now I want to draw a card because I can't yeah. like just, what? Just one light crystal, which you're possibly going to have all the time. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Yeah. Next is Summoning Art of Magna. It is one white mage art. Uh, quick cast. Look at the top four cards of your deck. You may reveal a stranger resonator from among them and put it in your hand. 
then put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. I like it. It is a really good card forward magna just because you can only have one stranger of each stranger in your deck, but you get to dig four deep to get one. Yeah. And if you know what, if you're getting a little weirdly land screwed, then you know which stranger to pick out of those so you can actually play it. Yeah. So I like it. It is pretty good. It's definitely a builder on card. It's definitely terrible in draft because yeah. it just is. But limited or uh, for, like constructed, it's awesome. Yeah. Done no limited. Yeah. yeah. Constructed. The next one is the Road to the Sacred Queen. It's one white. It's not a quick cast uh, edition. So enter. If your ruler is Faria, choose a card from your stranger deck at random and put it in your hand. That's super good. Uh, res wait. At random, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Resonators entering the field under your opponent's control. Enter the field rested. That in itself is very powerful. <laughs> yeah. This card is nuts. Mm -hmm. Like most of these roads are pretty ridiculous. This one's probably one of the better ones because it forces their dudes in tapped yep regardless what they have so their dudes have swiftness no yeah, cool i yeah. mean it has swiftness but you can't do anything with it because it's tapped oh i have a thing that has a uh, bane that well that thing's dead because it's tapped and i can swing into it and this with two mana this card you play this and then you play schrodinger's call and you don't care yeah. you're like cool that dude it's gone thanks yeah it's always a valid target no matter what yeah this card is nuts and it doesn't have to be played just in faria it just you get extra value from her agreed so any white deck is probably going to want to look at this card just at least sideboard yeah because it slows down people extremely especially if they have a tap ability and you don't want them to do it on your turn yeah so constructed playable limited it's pretty good too yep next up is the road of the winged lord he is one white for an addition uh into if your ruler is arla you choose two strangers at random and remove them and then angels you control gain barrier resonators. Oh. So your dudes don't get targeted by resonators, and you're like, cool. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I love all the art that they do with Arla. I love it. <laughs> for yeah. sure. They are pretty good. This one's only really good if you're playing Angel Tribal. Otherwise, it's not worth using. Yeah. Like, it's really not, unless you just want to remove two things. But his one drop resonators do this better. Exactly. And the fact that. It, this could just be sideboard too, because who knows what resonators they have to actually deal with your stuff. So yeah, man. The next one is three of a kind. It's one white quick cast mage art. Uh, gain a light crystal. Draw a card. If this card was awakened, draw three cards instead. So let's read this. Awakening. Reveal three cards. I share the share name from your hand or banish three light crystals. So it gives you options just in case you don't have any. And I mean, three crystals for three cards. Not yeah. too bad. Yeah. Considering you get most crystals free low, it's a pretty good card. Yeah. And it's one mana draw three. Like, I. Okay, cool. And if, if you draw anything like I do, then I can reveal three <laughs> cards turn one and be, be okay. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's definitely a build around card. Yeah. It's definitely not so good in limited, but, but I, hey, it's whatever it, it is. A cantrip just in a turn draw a card it can be okay. Yeah. Next up is Sukuyomi Noble. It is two white for a myth and a moon. Mm -hmm. And it is a 5-7 resonator. Players cannot play activated abilities or resonators they control unless they create control a moon. Awakening and moon mana. Enter, destroy target, non-moon addition if you do put two one counters on this card. This is a really good reprint. It's kind of lackluster in my opinion to the rest of the set, but it's a good reprint that we needed because it kills additions. Yeah. And with all the new roads coming out and being crazy additions everywhere and Seal of still being a card, it's definitely going to be needed. And Alter as well, for sure. Yeah. But uh, the fact that if they're not playing anything Moon, none of their people have activated abilities through the whole game. Yeah, it's pretty good. Which is pretty powerful, I think. Yeah. Yes. Alright, Valkyrie of the Weaver of Destiny. It's a stranger. It's three white. Uh, it's a 10-14. So it has flying, enter, remove two target non j ruler, non magic zone entities your opponents control from the game, just straight up. Then when this card leaves the battlefield, put all cards that are removed this way back in the field under their owner's control. So it's just a neat little banish effect for a little bit. Yeah, this card is pretty nuts. It, it just does that, like, it's just like, hey, boom. And it is like Seal of Lineth, if you do it correctly, you can remove the dudes and keep them removed forever yeah because it's all separated yeah the thing. way you stack it you just you you play the dude put his abilities on then you kill him before the ability goes off and yeah. the game trigger happens you, you, remove, the trigger. you remove two dudes for three which yeah. is pretty good uh next up is white wolf it is one white for a fairy tale beast then it is a four six 
With Drain, this card gains plus two, plus two for each light crystal you have. So it is a one mana, I'm gonna kill you yeah. if I have lots of light crystals. I'm gonna beat you down. Yeah. It's one mana doggo that's good old boy with the crystals. So turn two, it can be, what, a 12? Yeah, when you play your regalia, you get two light crystals. And then you choose it and again. You get another two so light you crystals. get four, and then yeah, it's quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty ridiculous. For turn two, and you gain that life, so. Yeah, so definitely use this if you're playing Dark Alice again, yeah. because it's just strong for that deck. Mm -hmm. This card would actually be really good and limited if you're playing light crystals stuff, because it it doesn't need much more than just like two light crystals to beat ridiculous yeah and it's a four six so it defeats all the other one drops that are four fours yeah already and the next one is wizard of the veil savaria it's one fight quick cast resonator wizard enter another trigger resonator gains barrier until in a turn i love this card and it is a four four it is a four four so i love the f i love cards that save your dudes and this one is a dude that can swing so i like it yeah, I'm okay with this one because it's on a dude. It's not a spell. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a waste in my life. Yeah, yeah. But it's never what it a waste. Is. Never a waste. Uh, it, it is definitely usable and constructed and limited. It's pretty good. Yeah. Next up is the Workshop Assistant Researcher. She is two white and one for a human, a 9 9 with barrier. Meh. A three drop barrier is okay. It's nothing like crazy, but because there's much better for three right now. Yeah. But it is still pretty good. Limited, it's awesome. Yeah, definitely pick them up limited. Constructed, I don't feel like don't. it's going to be worth it. Yeah, don't play Constructed at all. Alright, uh, Yudrasil's Grace, right? Uh, it's a one white quick cast champ. Uh, remove target resonator from the game. At the end of turn, put it under the field under its owner's control. This is a build around for sure. Just in case you have a lot of inner play abilities. Even tricks where like the... Do comes into play, and then if it has to be exiled into turn, you can pop this, and it's like your own creature again. Stuff like that. Also, this card is busted in returns of attacking. Because it says target resonator. It doesn't care whose it is. Oh, yeah. You're like, ah, swing my dude. Your dude's in my way? No, get it out of my way. Take yeah. your damage. Take your damage. Yeah. And you can also do it at the end of their turn, so their dude is gone for the entirety of your turn. Yeah. Because it triggers at the very beginning of the end turn, so if yeah. you do it like... How the stacking works. You do it after that, then you win. Yeah, and you just get to be like, hey, your dude's gone. Thanks. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, that is it for white. We're going to jump into red. All right, first guy we got for red is a stranger. It is Agni, the Pyre War God. And he has one red for a 7-7. Seven, seven, and he's got flying, pierce, and precision. Just, uh, why not? Yeah. And then this card gets plus four, plus four for each stranger resonant you control. He's okay. He's not like the best stranger, but yeah. he's pretty decent for one mana. If you need the card slot for Magna, then there you go. Just throw him in there. Yeah, he's a pretty cool little one drop to have for Magna. Oh yeah. The next one is Alasaris, minion of, well, Lapis. It's a two red quick cast minion. So enter, name a counter, re remove a total of four counters with that name from the number of cards in all zones, okay. And he has a limit break. So if you have him named as a limit, he has quick cast. Oh, okay, so the symbol is only there just because, just in case you have lemon break. But you may pay one less to play this card, so it can be a one drop. When you remove counters from this card, put a one one counter on each J resin area you control for each counter removed this way. That's crazy ridiculous. So he's also a six six. Yeah, so he can do a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, I, I think this dude's more of a sideboard card than anything because if you don't run against counters, this dude's kind of pointless. It's true. It's really good against like Mary Bill and all that fun stuff because it says number of cards in all zones. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be yours. It can be your opponent's too to and remove all counters. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a 1-1 one -one counter. It could be any counter. So yeah. your soul token or whatever, your soul counter, you're like, I know, get out of here. Just get out of here. Yeah, for sure. Or alter counters, but like you don't get to have those anymore. Yeah. It. He's going to be really good as a build around, but I think it's mostly sideboard. Agreed. Um, Next up is Athena, Titan of Revenge. It is baby girl from before, and I love her very much. Uh, she is two red and one for a 7-7. Seven, seven. She is a 12 apostle, and that matters be for another card. Uh, she has swiftness. When this da when, whenever damage is dealt to you, put two more encounters on this card. Pay a red, this card deals 100 damage to each player. Oof, I think I remember this guy. Oh, man. She's so strong, because she's just like, three mana, take seven. I don't care if you hit me, because... I don't care. Yeah. 
Each time you swing in, it gets bigger. And then at the end of turn, I'm probably gonna ping this lady. Yeah, and if you're like, hey, I don't have anything else to do, end of your turn, well, let's both take five. Yeah. And then she gets 10 counters because... Great. Because why not? Because each one of those triggers her ability because it says when damage is dealt to you and it doesn't do it like... It, it's separate instances with her ability. Yeah, exactly. So you just get extra counters. Super, She's nuts. Super good. All right, next one is Blaze Tornado. It's a uh, two red and one mage art. This card deals 1400 damage divided as you choose to any number of target J resonators. I like it. But this is not, a really good mage art, actually. Yeah. yeah, the fact that it's a mage art so you can just tap your regalia and then one <laughs> that basically almost board wipe. Yeah, this card's almost free low to be like, ah, kill these dudes. Yeah. Any, any of the mage arts that can use red are pretty good for this. It's, I don't think you'd want to use more than like two of them, yeah. honestly, two or three, but it's it's a decent board wipe for red. And uh, limited a bomb. Yeah, limited it crushes yes. this, because you're like three mana kill the world. Uh, next up is a huge long name. <laughs> That's almost <laughs> what it could sound like. Uh, Hino Kagusichino Mikoto, the flaming god of fate. Good lord, that name was long. Stranger, they had to put that yeah, in. Yeah, Stranger. So, four red and one. For a 2020, okay. enter this card deals 1,000 damage to your opponent and each J resonator they control. Nice. He's pretty strong. Yeah. I don't like his name, but he's pretty strong. Yeah. It costs a lot, but he's pretty strong. He's pretty worth it. I don't, I don't know. In Magnus, he's really good if you play him in the deck because you're like, hey, cool, take five. Yeah. In the other ones, I think this better for the actual stranger decks to use. It's cool, but it's not the best in my opinion. Play red white, you can do the one white, go get another stranger, and this comes into play. That's pretty cute. Yeah. But yeah. I don't I say a slight weird build around for everything. Yeah. The next one is Magical Arrow. This guy is broken. It's one red insta cast. Or quick cast. This card deals one da one hundred damage to target players slash or Jairus in here. Put this card into its owner's hand as it resolves. Stupid. And it's a mage art. It's a mage art. So you're like, ah, cool. Take one. Take one. And it, it, <laughs> why not? If it didn't ping the player, maybe it will be okay. But the fact that it can, you can just be end of turn, take five. End of turn, take five again. Six, seven. Like, it, this just... card is pretty nuts. I don't I don't think this card is going to be super broken, really, because it's only one damage. So, like, it, that's its drawback. Yeah. But a card that always can be played is kind of ridiculous. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, you lose no advantage of just having free time. Yeah, because you're like into turn. Like he was saying, you're just like, take damage. Take Why damage. It, it adds up. Limited, that card's a bomb. Yeah, agreed. Uh, constructed, it's pretty good build around. Yeah. Next up, Ouroboros, the Snake of Reincarnation. Ooh. It is five red for a 2020. It is also a 12 Apostle. Uh, enter, remove all cards in your deck from the game. Then shuffle all magic stones from your graveyard into the magic stone deck and shuffle all of the cards from your graveyard into your deck. When this card is put into a graveyard from the field, put it on the bottom of your donor's deck. So this dude, as long as he's in play, you never, you, he goes back. But it's a 2020 dude. It's cool. It's not the best thing in the world. Yeah. But it's there. And you like lose everything. I'm not a huge fan of it. No. It is a decent 12 apostle, but it's not really worth playing. No, not at all. What The white Ouroboros, right, is also a 2020 that's almost free. Yeah, and but, it gives you life. I, yeah, no. Don't don't play that card, I think. Yeah. Next one is Phoenix of the Flame World. It's three red and one. It's a 12 Apostle Phoenix. So flying, enter. This card deals 300 damage to each resonator your opponent's control, so probably nothing. But when this card is put in the graveyard from the field, you may pay two red. If you do, put this card in the field under its owner's control. It's a 9-9. Nine -nine. I don't think this card's worth it, to be honest. Yeah, I don't either. If it deals 400 damage, that's literally the number that kills everything, then maybe. Yeah, four would kill most things. This isn't that good. It's not good at all. This this card with Genshi Tension is pretty funny, because then you're just like, ah, the board takes seven. Yeah. Neat. But otherwise, this card's really not that strong. Maybe okay and limited as an infinite blocker kind of thing, but don't. Yeah. I would not play this card at all. Yeah. Next up, Reflex Rushing In. It is one red, Chant Mage Art. If you have passion, remove the top two cards of the deck from the game. You may play them until the end of your opponent's turn. Ooh. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, invert your ruler. 
This card is only constructed good with Reflect. Otherwise, yep. this card is terrible. Yeah. Because it doesn't do anything. So literally, <laughs> it literally does not do anything, but it is a great card if you do play it. Yeah, if you're playing Reflect and Refrain, you play this card. If you don't, you don't. Don't. Just don't. Don't touch it at all. Swordmaster of the Exploding Flame. It's one red human. This card gains minus X, minus X, where X is your life. It's a 3,000, 3,000. Now, if you have seen this in other TCGs, it's extremely powerful, but I don't know how good it is in Force of Will. Yeah, we'll have to see what this dude can do. I I think he could be pretty wild in a good red deck because there's the silly cat that deals two damage to you, and then the little firefox that deals damage to you. So you, just, you get to deal with free damage to yourself to make this dude go down and be quicker. Yeah. But I don't know. With Athenia, really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you make sure you just take up all the damage and he swings and she swings and you're just like <sighs> turn all your red stones sideways. Yeah. Yeah. And you may take all, damage. all it's the damage. Pretty ridiculous. We'll see what this can do. I I definitely am gonna go with constructed more than anything. Yeah. Uh limited he's okay, but I'm gonna go with constructed more than anything. For sure. I mean, if you think about it, if you're at 10 life, then he's a 2020, but good luck on that. Yeah. Next is Sylvia's Burning Flame. It is one red chant mate moon art with quick cast. Choose one. If you control Limit Break, Sylvia, Minion of Lapis, choose up to two instead. Target J Resonator gets plus eight, plus O, oh, first strike, precision, and pierce. Nice. Or this card does 800 damage to target J Resonator. It's okay. I think it's... Yeah, I don't... I think it's good. I don't know if it's worth using with it because yeah. it's kind of a slot taken up. It'll take some play testing to see what this card can do if it's worth using it as a slot because you may just want more dudes. I don't know. I think it's a limited filler, a one of for sure. But besides that, no. Yeah, but if you have limit break her, this card gets nuts. Yeah. Because you get both abilities. It's not too bad. The Road to the Flame King, it's one red addition. Enter if your ruler is Melgus, choose a card from a stranger deck at random and put them in your hand. And then J Resonators, you control gain pierce, which is very, very nice. Yeah, so all my red dudes that I don't like you with get trample. Yeah. Or pierce. You just go through. And especially if you're like turn two or three, you have <clears throat> the 20 20 counter dude and you swing in and you just win the game. Again, that 3000 3000 gets way better now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is it for red. We're going to jump into blue. First guy we got in blue is Gentleman Lightning Collar. It's a weird name, <laughs> yeah. but I'll accept it. Uh, one blue and one for a 5-5 five five wizard, and you may pay one less to play Mage Arts. Man. This card does not feel worth it to me. No. Because blue already has a one drop that lets you things cost less with Xion, but yeah. I, I just I don't feel like this card's worth it. And I really don't. The fact that most Mage Arts are like two of will colors, they're not even <laughs> yeah. colorless, so why even bother? No. They, I wouldn't use this card. It's fancy, but don't use it. It looks cool. Yeah. But... I mean, he's on a floating chair. I'm pretty sure. He's, just don't yeah, use it. Yeah, it's not worth it. Not worth it. Next one is Mary Bella's Active Decoy. It's one white uh, addition. It's also a machine. So enter. Draw a card. Cool. Thanks. Tap. Rest target resident your opponent controls. Play this ability only if you control Mary Bell Type 0. It might be good. I don't know if it's worth it, but it does count as a machine, and it's a control. Yeah, it's decent for Machina. I, I don't know. You'd have to see it and try. It's, yeah. It's decent it's, one blue. It's very... Uh, the fact that it places itself cool, it's just a 1-1 one, one draw card. But the fact that you can tap dudes as well to save yourself, I don't yeah. know. We'll see where it goes, honestly. Uh, next up, Princess of the Dragon Palace. It is a stranger. It is one blue for a 6-6. Six, six. When this card is put into a graveyard from the field, you may enter. You may return target resonator to its owner's hand. Pay a blue, discard this card, draw a card. Nice. Uh, whenever a resonator with total cost three or more enters the field under your control, you may put this card from your graveyard into the field. I like it. And obviously she's in some mischief because that star is not having it. Yeah. The weird one-eyed stars are kind of throwing me off. Yeah. But this card is actually pretty nuts because it it, it is a... I've already seen it as a big combo piece in a big deck yeah. that you can have a lot of dudes really early and it reanimates itself, which is what makes it so strong because you just play a three drop and you're like, hey, cool, reanimate it. Get this back, draw a card or do whatever you need to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, there's tons of value in this, but it is a stranger. So the quicker you have it, the better it is. Yeah. So this card is really just good and constructed. It's 
decent and limited, I guess, but it's not the best. It's mostly for constructed and silly tomboy stuff. It's really what she's for. Yeah. And then next one is, oh, sorry, here you go? Yeah. Is it go? Sorry. The next one is Random Walk. It is one blue chant mage art, and it is a quick cast. Put target resonated with to total cost one or less, or target regalia on the bottom of its owner's deck. This card's pretty good for mage arts because it gets rid of regalia for one blue. Get out of my life. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's definitely a good major for blue to use, and it's just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Constructed really good, limited it's pretty well, but it's not the best. And it's not best at all. The art's okay. But apparently, like, every chant is, like, quick cast. So, thank you. Yeah. All right, refrains, getting out! Uh, that face, though, it's a one blue uh, quick cast. <laughs> if you have calmness, rest two target non-magic stone entities. They don't recover during the controller's next recovery phase. Invert your ruler. I think it's very strong for one blue, for sure. And it's a control. Yeah, it card. is definitely very strong, but it's again one of those cards that if you're not using Reflect and Refrain, this card is trash. Yeah, don't use it. Don't use it. Literally does nothing. Yeah. Uh, the Road to the Machine Lord it is one blue edition. Enter if your ruler is Machina, choose a stranger at random, put it in your hand. You may spend any will produced by cards named Maribel Type Zero you control to play machines. Oh, so it, add, it lets your Regalia turn into J for machines, which is pretty cool. Mana ramp, yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah. Obviously a build around, otherwise. Yeah, definitely a build around, otherwise it's not so good. Yeah. The Road to the Princess's Love. It's one blue edition. Enter. If your ruler is Valentina, you can you gain control of Trigger Resonator with total cards. Two or less. Put this card in the field. Pay two blue and one, return this card to its owner's hand. It's, yeah, it's, as long as this card is in yeah. the field, you gain control of the target to drop. And then you can bounce it and keep doing that, which is kind of cool. It's a good shout back to the old Valentina, that's what she did, was steal two drops. Seems really powerful. Yeah, I think, I think. it's going to be a really good card to use for blue. It's really good for control, because they just could be like, hey, play that, play Vala, let me take your stuff, because yeah. I can. But that is it for blue, we're going to delve into green. Next up is Amph Amphisbina, the Two-Headed <laughs> yeah. Dragon. It is a stranger. That's a weird name. Very. Uh, two green for a 6-12 with flying and pierce. You pay a green until the end of turn. This card would deal damage. It deals double that damage instead. Play this ability only once per turn. <laughs> what? <laughs> Neat. <laughs> so if you're playing this and you have any kind of like pump spells, this card gets nuts. And the fact that it has pierce, so... Double the damage all you like. Just do it. Yeah. Because you're going to hit the dude and then double the damage <laughs> and you're going to go through and kill your opponent as well. Yeah, that, that's a really good strategy for green to use. Definitely think about using him if you're playing green. Yeah, and Magna. The next one is Behemoth. It's three green and a one. So it has Pierce. It's a 15-15, thankfully. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of Pierce cards, finally. It's, we've been missing that. So, when this card enters the field, or whenever it attacks, remove target addition or regalia from- oh no. From the game. When this card is put in the graveyard from the field, put all cards from all removed areas that were removed by this card into the field under your control. Hold on, let me read that second part again. Put all cards from the- all removed areas that were removed by this card into the field under your control. Okay. Yeah, so it eats their stuff and gives you it. Yeah. Whenever it enters the field or whenever it attacks, remove target, addition, or regalia. And then you get all of those when you get, it Because it says under your control. Ridiculous, yep. this card. It is a 12 protective deity, so you can get... So Lineth can do silly things with it if you find out how to play green with it. Yeah. But hey. I feel like this should be a stranger, because it's a 15-15 <laughs> for four. Yeah, and I mean, it's pretty strong. With Pierce. It does, it does the stuff and things. It does all the things you need to do. <laughs> yeah. Definitely constructed playable, definitely a limited bomb. It is a beast as well. Yeah, so uh, eat your heart out, Percy, and have fun with that. Yeah. Uh, the next up, the Road to the Beast Queen is one green addition. If your ruler is Percy, you choose a card from a stranger deck and put it in your hand at random. You may pay zero to play God's Art abilities as long as there are 10 or more friendship counters on your J ruler. Meh. This card is pretty trash compared to the other ones yes. because you never really have 10 friendship counters on your ruler. I mean, you kind of do, but I've never really seen it. Okay. Here's a thought, though. If you pay zero, can you stack God's Art abilities on top of each other? No. You can only God's Art once. Well, if you God's Art, but in response to that God's Art, you God's Art? 
I mean, you can. You only get to do it one time. Okay, sad. So you can say it like seven times, but yeah. you still only get one. Like, I do this a million times, and only once trigger, so. Yeah. This is worthless. Yeah, it's really not good for Prissy. It's, it's not worth the card slot in that deck. It's like, we need a balancer. So they just kind of just made a crappy road. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it for green. We're going to delve into black. First card we got in black is a meeting in the darkest night. It is one black chant moon art. Remove target card in a graveyard from the game. Draw a card. If this card is awakened, you may play the removed card this way until or this way until the end of the turn. And it awakens for a black and a moon. So it's really cool if you have the regalia for Gil. Yeah. But I still don't know if it's worth playing because it There's a lot of stipulations to this, and you need a lot of things to work right to actually and you get have this. A, you need a lot of mana to play that game. Yeah. Because you still have to pay for that card that you're playing. So to me, it doesn't feel like it's all that worth it. No, not at all. It's a cool sideboard card for sure, because it removes a card, but it's it's just kind of meh otherwise. Yeah, just in case for sure. The next one is Anubis, the Guardian of Throne. It's a 2 Darkness, 7 10. And of course, it's a Stranger. So it has Bane. And enter, put the two target resonators from your graveyard into your hand. He's okay. Yeah. He's a decent Grave Walker type of dude. The artwork's pretty metal, though. Yeah, I do enjoy the artwork for sure. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he's okay. Maybe sideboard, I don't know. Or maybe throw him in there if you need to. But I feel like there's a lot of better strangers out there for sure. Yeah. Uh, next up, Berserker of the Black Moon. He is two black and two for a minion. Uh, he is a 10 10. If you lost life this turn in any way, including loss of, loss of life, payment of life, reduction of life due to damage or other effects, you may pay two less to play this card. Uh, enter, draw a card, you lose four life. When this card is revealed by the ability of a Gil Lapis you control, draw a card, you lose four life. So this dude's neat with Gil Lapis because he can help you get free card advantage, but I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah. Because yeah, he's a 10-10 for, for four, potentially two, but... Man, and you take life after losing life again already to play this guy. Like he's yeah, he's he's a... cool, but I don't think he's gonna be worth it. He's really cool and limited. Like he's a good limited dude because he's four drop ten ten that yeah. draws you a card. But constructed, I don't think he's worth it. Agreed. Oh yes, I was I was warned about this card, but I <laughs> do enjoy the art. Bizarre zombie. It's one darkness uh, zombie resonator. It has Bane. It's a four four with Bane. And yeah, I love everything about it. And it's got a booty. It has a very nice booty. Because you know, fan service. Yay. <laughs> and I mean, if it's going to be a basic 4-4 Bane, might as well have a nice booty Bane. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next exactly. up, Black Moonlight. It is one black for a chant moon art. Quick cast, target resonator gains plus eight, plus eight until the end of turn. If you control limit break, name of target resonator, it also gains eternal and barrier until the end of turn. Nice. Wow, this card's nuts. It might be the first one of these cards that I actually like, and I usually don't like these kind of cards. Like not combat tricks. Yeah, I'm not a huge combat trick kind of guy, but this one's kind of kind of neat. It's not too bad. And the, also, the art is metal, too. Yeah. This is... But getting Eternal Barrier and plus 8 plus 8 on the dude is pretty nuts. Yeah. But again, a lot of things has to work right for this. Yeah, so it's kind of a build around, but it's... Black Moon Ray, it's one darkness instacast, or quick cast moon art. Destroy target J Resonator slash or Stranger Resonator. Awakening. Players can't chase this card. And I don't know why this is a normal. Because this is ridiculous. Yeah, it is uh, Black Moon Beam is back. Yep. So uh, just know that. Uh, destroy target J Ruler or oh, Stranger, why not? Just, just, Great. Just, just one, just one darkness. Just yeah, out of my game. And if you play Moon, and if you if they need to cancel it, then it doesn't happen. Yeah. So ridiculous. This yeah, is... this card is really good. It's definitely going to be in most of the black decks that you fight because it's just really strong. It, it's a good way to kill a J, and most Js right now kind of do a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> uh, next is the Black Rabbit. It is one black and one for a minion rabbit, and it just looks terrifying. All right. For a 4-4, enter your opponent discards a card. When this card is revealed by the ability of a Gilapis you control, your opponent discards a card. That's cute. So if it happens, then they, you make them discard two, but I would not run it initially, really. Mm. So these are when you use Gilapis' top ability to dig deep, you can reveal the cards and be like, hey, cool, do yeah. things. I reveal this, discard a card, and then I play this, discard a card. I mean, it's neat, but I don't. it's not really worth it in my opinion. No, not at all. 
All right, next one is Black Wolf. It's one darkness uh, fairy tale beast. It has precision for a 6 4. This card gets plus two, plus two for each darkness crystal you control. This guy can get out of hand again real quick. Yeah, you just play uh, white black doggos and you're like, hey, let's I, let's go to town. I control your board all the time with <laughs> yeah. big dudes. Definitely a really good builder. Yeah. Uh, next is Blazer, Minion of Lapis. He is one black for a 4 4 with precision. He's got limit break, he gains first strike. Plus eight, plus eight, and when this card is banished by an effect or an ability you control, this card deals damage equal to its attack, divided as you choose to any number of target players and or J-Resonators. <coughs> this card is wild. Yeah, it really is. Because it, if you pump it up and it automatically pumps itself if you have limit break, then you're just like, cool, deal damage everywhere. Yeah, yeah. so 12-12 first strike for one, with precision, cool. Yeah. So let's kill almost everything because yeah. I can. And if you, if you're running, what's her name? I already forgot the one that one drop. Or whenever you sacrifice anything, the ghostly touch or whatever. Yeah. Then you sacrifice this and kill two things or blow up their face. Right? Yeah. Or return a dude. You banish this with any card that's black green. You're just like, hey, cool, free. Yeah. Let's kill your board. Free damage, kill your board. Uh, thank you. Yeah, this card is definitely going to be crazy when it's built around. It's really pretty decent in limited, but it's not the best. Like limited, it's good if you have limit break just because he's a 12 12 for yeah. one. It's going to kill you, but otherwise, it's kind of me. Man. Next one is Blazer's Art of the Slaughter. It's one darkness, moon art, quick cast. Each player banishes a resident. Hey, there you go. If you control limit break, uh, Blazer Minion of Lapis, which was the last dude that we just yeah. talked about, right? Correct. Choose a resident you control and a resident your opponent controls instead. Each player banishes the chosen resident they control. So basically, you have control of whatever they need to sack, mm -hmm. and it's really powerful. Especially if you're going to already have the limit break of that minion of Lapis. But don't be afraid to just play that card for one to just be like, hey, banish dude, because yeah, that's way good. Especially if they're playing mid-range style and they plop a big dude and you're like, just banish that dude, thank you. Uh, next up is the Collapsing World. It is two black and three for an addition. At the beginning of each player's turn, that player banishes a Resonator. Oof. That's pretty cool. I don't see it really being played and constructed, but limited, it's really cool. Because right. you're like, hey, cool, kill a dude. Yeah, get there. Only in, of course, like, graveyard decks that you're going to play against, or play with, then you'll play this because you can get your dudes back. But it's kind of crazy. And it affects them first, so which is pretty nice, though. Yeah. This is definitely a card that I would love a print of on the wall. Yeah. The art's awesome. The art is fantastic. I would buy the original if I had some money. Yeah. But uh, build around. Yeah, definitely build around. Yeah. Next one is Curse of Caduceus. It's one red or one darkness edition. Your opponent cannot gain life. Awesome. Sweet. Your opponent cannot recover entities in a phase other than their recovery phase. Tap your opponent loses 200 life. I, this is not a road, but I would play this instantly all the time. Yeah, this card's really good just because it makes them not gain life and they can't keep attacking you. Yeah. Oh, that dude on tap? No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's only Thanks. a recovery phase. Thank you. And you just ping them for two every time. Yeah, this card actually shuts down Super Burning Beast Rush pretty hard because you don't get to untap your free stunts. Yeah, yeah. No, get out of here. Oh, yeah, also uh, Athenia too. Yeah. So, yeah, don't untap your stones. Yeah, this card's pretty nuts. It's really good. Definitely playable, definitely build around. Build around sideboard. Yeah, it's mostly a sideboard card. I will say that. But definitely use it. And also limited, if you get multiples of these, you're just like in a turn, take four, <laughs> yeah. take six, just doesn't matter. Next up is Dark Alice's Smile. It is Aww. one black chant mage art. Your opponent reveals their hand. Choose a chant, addition, regalia, or stranger resonator from among them and remove it from the game. If this card is awakened, instead choose a card from among them and remove it from the game. Oof. Awakening is banished to Darkness Crystal. Nice. So this card is really, really strong, and regardless of what you're playing, if any black is really strong because you get to choose anything but a normal resonator. Yeah. And if you have Dark Alice with Darkness Stones, Darkness Crystals, you get to get in. Yeah, at least. Yeah, the fact that it names Regalia too, just in case. Yeah. I would definitely... I want to really play it in Limited, but definitely in... Constructed, yes. Constructed. Next one is Dark Summoning. It's one black quick cast. Uh, it's a moon art. Draw a card. If you control Limit Break Lineth and the Dark uh, Priestess, you may search your deck for a card. Put it in your hand instead, then shuffle your deck. Wow. 
Yeah, so it is one black draw card or one black s search for a card. Yeah. It is kind of nuts. It's very, I would definitely use it. It's definitely a build around constructed card. Yeah, if you're playing Lineth, then it's probably worth using, but otherwise it may not be. Yeah. Uh, next up is Demon of the Black Moon. It is two black for a minion demon. It looks wild. It's yeah. a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, with flying and it enters, you put two own counters on target J Resonator. So when this card is revealed by an ability of Gil Lapis, you put two own counters on target J Resonator. Nice. Uh, like, I think most of the time you're always just going to put, be putting limit break on your cards, but this guy can be an 8 8 for two flying. Yeah, I mean, this dude's a two drop 8 8 flyer. Yeah. That's what makes him good. Yeah, and he's a minion, so you can play it off of Regalia as well, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I like him for, for uh, heal pretty well. And limited. Limited, he's a bomb. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Next one is Demon of the Black Moon Lineth. I love this art a lot for other reasons. But it's two darkness, Resonator, Demon Minion. Awakening X. Enter, destroy target Resonator with a total cost X or less. If you spin a moon to play this, Awakening cost, you may gain life to that Resonator that's attack. It's a 5-7 that can kill a dude, and I really, really like it. Yeah, this card's really strong. I didn't know they made her a minion. She's a really good reprint, and it's it'll be really good to use. It's I wouldn't say use more than like two of them because they're not you have to pay X to do it. Yeah, but it is really strong. Yeah. So if you have Regalia, obviously for that, it's way 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 yeah. better. Build around, it's really good. Construct uh, limited, it's a bomb because your light cake will kill that dude. And this might be the only time where she has wings but can't fly because they're so tiny. <laughs> That's it. That's the only one I'll give. <laughs> Next up is Distortion of the Phenomenon. It is one black chant moon art, and you can trigger an automatic ability of a ruler named Gilapis you control. And if you have Limit Break Alistaris, trigger an automatic ability of a card named Lapis Gilapis you control instead. So you can essentially get the front side normally, yeah. and if you have the Limit Break, you get the back side. Which is pretty cool, because just for one black, you can trigger without Regalia and go ahead and get your Limit. And like the best part about these limit break things that I was thinking about is you don't actually have to control the dude. Actually, you do have to control the dude, but well, I mean, you could still name it and then have it. Yeah, and you still control the limit break. You just don't have to have the dude in play, which is kind of nice. Yeah, exactly. Next one is End of the World. It's two darkness, two moon. It's a moon art. It's a chant. Choose one. If you control limit break, Gil Lapis, choose four instead. Okay, good. <laughs> Neat. So you're always going to choose your opponent banishes two resonators, draw two cards. Your opponent discards two cards, put uh, two resonators from the Gogo to the field. Uh, this card is busted and always will play. <laughs> yeah. 10 out of 10 will play. <laughs> yeah. Definitely play in this card if you're playing Hardcore Gil Lapis, because all you gotta do is choose him, which you're already gonna do because you want his God's art and you want all of his extra stuff. And then you get four abilities. Yeah. You pay a mana ability and they're all ridiculous. You're just like, Turn four, I paid two for, I don't know, man, a regalia, add the lemon break, pay, tap the things, tap your moon, then do all this stuff, and you just win. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Yeah. It's definitely another one of those crazy four drop spells that look is very over overlooked, but has a lot of potential. Agreed. Ridiculous potential. Uh, next up is Izanami, the Sealed Terror. She is one black and one for 12 Apostle. Uh, with a 6-6, six, six, you pay 3 black and 2 and remove this card in your graveyard from the game, destroy Tiger Resonator. Or you pay a black and a moon, remove this card in your graveyard from the game, your opponent discards a card. It's kind of a meh Resonator. It's a cool reprint, but yeah. it's not really necessary, I don't think, for what you're wanting to do. Exactly. And the graveyard stuff is cool, but you have to get it there and then a 2-2. Two, two. Just a 6-6 six, six for 2 is meh. Yeah. Next one is uh, John Dart. Heroine of the Shadow, is she awesome like last time? It's one darkness, yeah. shadow, enter. Like the top five cards of your deck, you may reveal a light darkness, a light darkness card from among them, put it in your hand, and put the rest of the bottom of the deck up in any order. Banish this card, gain a light crystal, and a dark crystal. So she's okay, she's not as crazy powerful, and yeah, not too bad. She's she's really good in, in uh, Dark Alice, because she helps you really, really well. Yeah, and yeah, be able to get a crystal and all that fun stuff for sure. And dig deep for a card. It's pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, next up is Lapis's Dark Storm. This is a really good reprint. I kind of crazy that they reprinted it, but I'm okay with it. It's two black chant moon art. Your opponent discards a card at random, then discards a card. 
Because why not? <laughs> two mana, get rid of two cards, I'll take it. And uh, I can play this card for free because I'm a Regalia? Yeah. Bet. Turn two, Regalia. Then this. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Hope you enjoy turn two, losing two cards. Ridiculous. All right. Lineth, the Dark Priestess. This card looks awesome. Expletive here. Oh, wait. So, sorry, I'm looking at the, the, the art of the will. It's actually rainbow colored, which I think that's the first one I've seen or noticed. But it's two darkness, moon, minion. He has Drain Bane, Tin Tin, Limit Break. Here we go. So it has Flying, Barrier, Resonator, Enter, choose one. Destroy Target Regalia, destroy all Stranger Resonators. Well, thanks, Magna, get out of here. Reveal a 12 Apostle from outside the game and put it in the field. So that's cool, that's cute, it's neat. Yeah, she is really, really strong if you have the limit break just because you get to kill whatever you want, really. Yeah. Or get a free dude. And like in, in tournaments or whatever, your 12 Apostle from outside the game would be in your sideboard. But okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. I'll get this dude for free though and put it in the field. Is the Thanks. white Oreo Bolios or whatever? Uh, is, is he no, a but the red one is. But I, I'll go get an Athena in turn three and not care and be like, take seven. Hey, cool, neat. Yeah. That just happened. And yeah. I have a 10 10. 10 10 for three, technically. You, but, you yeah. technically could have 17 damage on turn three in play. And that's kind of silly. Yeah, that's kind of really, really. She is super strong. Definitely play her if you're playing Gil. Like she's, or definitely think about her for Gil. Yeah, she's a very strong part of his package, and it'd be really good. Okay, I get the correlation. It's rainbow colored because it's an MR, so yeah. it lets you know that. Yeah, it's the new fancy one. Yeah, yeah. Oops. Next up is Magician of the Outland. We're in Mortal Kombat now, but yeah. two black and one for a nine nine with barrier chant. A limited good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, limited it's neat, but it's about it. Yeah. No. I wouldn't use it in constructed. Oh, a classic fun little card that everyone loves is a mimic. It's a two darkness, quick cast, as a fairy tale. It has Bane as well, because obviously. Your opponent must attack this card if able. <laughs> this card enters the field rested. This card is so good for flavor. Yeah. Oh my god. Everyone loves this mythical creature. By, by no means is this card like super good, but the flavor of this card is awesome. I mean, it is a two mana <laughs> before blocks kill spell for sure. Yeah, because it's got quick cast and vein, which does yeah. make it a lot cooler. It is a one seven, so it can survive all the little dudes you want to get rid of. <laughs> and it just eats things. Like, yeah, I love the flavor of this card. It's so good. It's so awesome. Definitely constructed cool. Limited bomb. bomb. Yeah. Next is mind break. What is this art? This art oh, yeah. is bad ass. All right, so sorry. Mind Break is two black chant moon art. Name a card. Your opponent reveals their hand and discards all cards that share a name with the name card. If this card is awakened, instead your opponent removes all cards that share a name with the name card from, the, from in their hand and graveyard from the game. Yeah. Awakening for a moon. Wow, this card's awesome. So it's if you know what they're playing or have a good idea what they're playing, you can just choose it and hope hope for the best. Yeah. If you've seen their hand already, you get to do it. And then if you have the extra mana, you're just like, cool, let's get rid of all of them. Yeah. Because I don't want to deal with them. So definitely sideboard grade A, put it there. Or if you know the meta that whatever happens around, then you can just put it main board and get her done. I can't get over this artwork. This yeah, artwork this is artwork bad ass. Is amazing. Probably the best artwork I've seen yet. Because it's just so crazy. Let's see. All right. Maria, the fallen vampire. It's one darkness minion vampire flying. Enter. It's a 4 4. So this deals 4 damage to target resonator. You gain that much life. Cool. When this card is revealed by the ability of Gil Lapis, you control it. It deals 400 damage to target resonator. You gain that much life. Limit break. So if you name her, if this card would deal damage, it would deal double that damage instead. Kind of cute. Not too powerful, but okay. Yeah, but if you have the limit break on her, she shoots for 8, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And she swings for eight, so it's a one drop eight four. Yeah, definitely a, a, mm -hmm. a card to think about if you're playing Gil Lapis. He's she's a really good one drop for him. So so it has to target a Resonator. It's not a Mace, so you can accidentally kill her if they have nothing. So you can't play her turn one. Don't do it. Yeah. Next up is one pair. It is one black Mage Art. Quick cast. Gain two light crystals and two dark crystals. If if this card is awakened, you gain an additional two of each. 
Awakening, you reveal two cards that share a name from your hand. Yeah. It's neat. I don't know if it's worth playing it in... Well, actually, I think it is pretty much worth playing it in Dark Alice just because it's one mana gain four crystals. Pretty strong for that deck. Yeah, it really is. And if you have the extra, then you get free stuff. Especially you do it at the end of the turn. Done. Yeah. And the art is a lot. Uh, Percival, the Holy Grail of the Black Moon. That's one Darkness, Resonator, Minion, and Knight of the Round. So it's a 2-2. Enter. Reveal the top five cards from your deck. Put a Regalia or Minion from among them in your hand. Rest at the bottom. And banish this card. Put a Minion from your graveyard on top of your deck. So, okay. It's alright. Yeah, it's it's okay, just like the rest of the Percivals are. Like, it's got its purpose, but yeah. I don't know if it's worth it. Cool. Could be sideboarded, but meh. Meh. Don't do it. Uh, next up is Pitch Black Moon. One black and one for a moon edition. Your J ruler gets plus two, plus two, as long as it is darkness. Pay a moon, discard a resonator, put another target resonator from your graveyard into your hand. This card feels kind of meh. Yeah, very meh. It feels very... Don't want to use this card, because it's not really worth it. And it's plus two, plus two. Oh no, your J ruler gets plus two, plus two, and it's already a 2020 or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It is. It feels like, ah, cool, I'm already big, I don't care. Yeah, this should cost one, if anything. Pitch Black Minion, all right. He's one and two minion. Enter, name a card, you gain limit break, name of that card, 7-7. Seven, seven. I would probably, depending on how everything mixed when we put decks together, this might actually be worth it. Yeah, it could be, but the one drop spell that does it is a little better, yeah. but this is kind of cool. It's decent. Uh, next is Save the Queen. It is two black and two for a fairy tale, 12-12. Twelve, twelve. J resonates your opponent control game, minus four, minus four, because that's real good. Banish a Darkness Crystal, discard this card, your target J gets minus four, minus four, or draw a card. So this one's nuts. The Queen and the King are awesome. Yeah. They are ridiculous. They are powerful for a cheap cost, and they affect the board immediately. Yeah. Yeah, definitely use it. Yeah. If you're playing Dark Alice, you definitely play that card. Yeah. Shadow Doppelganger. Cute. It's one Darkness three. As this card is the field, you may remove a Resonator from your graveyard in the game. If you do enter the battlefield, as a copy of this card, remove this way. Super awesome graveyard recursion deck. Yeah. This is a really good reprint as well. It is a shadow. It's really good for Dark Alice because she does extra stuff with shadows as well. Yeah. Definitely, definitely usable in Constructed and Limited. Yeah, definitely a build around for that. Uh, next is Shadow Strike. It is two black chant, sword art, mage art. With quick cast, destroy target resonator. Then if this card is awakened, your opponent banishes resonators. And Awakening is banished to Darkness Crystals. Oof. So, Dark Alice, you get to be two mana and kill two dudes. Neat. Simple. Simple as that. Yeah. Instant speed, too. Shadow X. It's one Darkness Fairy Tale. Quick cast. <laughs> it has Bane, 4 4. Enter, gain two Dark Crystals, banish a Dark Crystal, your opponent loses two life. I think they're, I think this is going to be a secret hit, especially if you can just massive collect Dark Crystals. And you're just like, Boom, come to play, gain two, like, take a bunch of damage, and block your big dude. Don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would definitely use this Constructed for sure. Yeah, oh yeah. Limited, it's really good too. Yeah, it's a, it's a one drop kill a dude. Next up is Summoning of a Minion. One black and X, a moon art. Search your deck for a minion with total cost X or less and put it into the field and then shuffle your deck. So it is uh, really, really strong for Gil because you're just like, I need to go get this dude. I'm gonna go do that. And it's a moon art, so your regalia helps you. Yeah. Because why not? Ridiculous. Why? And this is a normal, it's not a rare. I don't know. This card is definitely built around in Gil Lapis. If you're not playing minions, it's worthless. Yeah. The Road to the Undead Lord. It's one darkness edition. Enter. If your ruler is a czar, choose two cards from your stranger decks and put them in the graveyard, of course. Cards in your graveyard cannot be targeted by spells or abilities your opponent controls. So nice. This card is a very good sideboard. Yeah, very good sideboard for sure. Your Athenia, get out of here. Yeah. Oh, you're doing things to my graveyard? Nah, nah, nah fam. Nah. Uh, next, the Scorn of Dark Alice. It is a good reprint. One black chant. Look at target opponent's hand and choose a resonator. They discard that card. Simple as that. It's a really pretty good discard spell. It's not like the crazy best, but it's really, really good. Like after, if they have a ro rotation or whatever, it'll be good, but you already have a one drop discard spell, yeah. so meh. True Black Ribbon. It's a one darkness edition. At the beginning, uh, as you play this card, target resonator. That card enters the field addition to the chosen target. Wait, this card enters the field added to the chosen target. Added resonator gets minus two, minus two, and loses all abilities. 
And then when this card is put in the graveyard from the field, return it to its owner's hand. So that's what makes it ridiculous. I would play this all the time in all black decks. I'm sorry. Like, just be like, shut your special card out of there. And if it dies, then I get yeah. this back. Making it lose all abilities is what makes this card yeah, so nuts. Exactly. Otherwise, this card's kind of me. Yeah. Uh, next is the Oof. Vicious Scarecrow. Jeez. Jeez. Some of this artwork is, is wild. Top notch. All right, sorry. Yeah. One black, fairy tale, 9-9. Nine, nine. With Bane, this card cannot attack. Okay. That is an angry defender. Yeah, yeah. Like, he will scare you from attacking. So that's, <laughs> yes. I guess he's doing his job. Yeah, I'm going to kill all your stuff because I can. And all your quickness that are dudes that are high damage really quick, don't. Just don't do it. Ooh, we got the World Ender. It's two darkness regalia. Mythic. Your J Ruler gains imperishable, which makes it really, really, really good. And tap, produce two wills in combination of darkness or moon. Spin this will only to play God's Art, minions, or moon arts. So, super powerful. And if you do this with Shakti, then it's super, because she's in imperishable, which is ridiculous. And the art looks amazing. Yeah, also with this card, if you play this, you get to go get, you have a minion in your hand, you can change it to whatever, where you can play minions with any color and play that minion. Yeah. It's kind of nuts. Super good. Yeah, definitely run in this with Gil because it's it is Regalia. Yeah. Do it. Just do Otherwise, it. it's just a really good Regalia. That is it for black. We're going to delve into multicolor now. All right, first multicolor card we got is Adam Brawley. He is one of each color for a 12 protective deities, and he is a 6 8. You reveal any number of stranger resonators that's combined to have the attribute light, fire, wind, water, darkness, rather than pay this card's cost. Enter, you, you gain 6 life, your opponent loses 6 life, this card deals 6 damage to target resonator, recover target magic stone, draw a card. So it is really wild, it, it is kind of a weird throwback to his old self that he does all this crazy stuff when you do yeah. things. You just have to have lots of strangers to do it. And there's like a silly card combo that he can do, you can loop him real easily right now. With this and the dragon priestess that's in blue. And it just kind of gets crazy. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It's a build around, obviously. Yeah, he's definitely a build around card. Limited, he's okay, but, but don't use definitely him. build around. Yeah, yeah. Alice's World of Madness. It's a white and a black edition. Resonators gain, was it minus two, minus two? Mm hmm. And it's all Resonators, so even yours. So, I don't know how that would play out. It's cool. It's not like the best card, but it's pretty neat. Yeah. If you're going against a token deck somehow, then play it, because they're small, but I would yeah. not play that. Uh, next is Attack Stance, which this is for Magna, and it is a red and a white for an addition major. He's ready for Judo Chop so hard. <laughs> and it's got Quick Cast. Enter. If you don't control another named Attack Stance, J Resonators you control get plus six, plus six in Eternal. Okay. Whenever a card named Defense Stance, Magic Stance, or the Final Stance enter the field under your control, banish this card. So you have to play a different one to change them. But they do different things to help you out. And it's a major addition, which is cute. Yeah, so your Drugalia helps you play it, and you get cool things. Yep. And plus six, plus six, and eternal. And it'll, and it turns pretty good. Yeah, if you're playing Magna, you should probably play these because they're kind of made for him. Yeah. Avatar of Strangers. It's a blue and a white mage art chant. Uh, at the additional cost to play this card, remove a stranger resonator in your graveyard from the game. Put a Resonator token copy of the Stranger Resonator removed by this card into the field, which can be extremely powerful. Oh, for yeah. sure. I would definitely play this card. Yeah, definitely really strong just because you get free, free copies. Just a free, free copy of a dude for two. Thanks. Uh, next is Bounty Hunter of Leganus. It is a blue, blue, and green for an 8 8. Enter a dry card, pay a green, recover this card, play this ability once per turn. This card is not. Not good. <laughs> not, not for the multi. Like, it's cool, but I don't want to pay three mana to just draw a card and, I guess, bounce him. Not worth it. Or, or untap him to swing again? Question mark. It's just, it, no. He has no it's abilities. Not worth it. He's not worth it. Don't play it. Cage of the Mother Goose. It's a darkness and white uh, fairy tale edition. You may rest a recovered fairy tale. Well, yeah. J Resonator you control rather than play this card's cost, which can be very powerful. Enter. Remove target non J ruler, non magic stone enemy from the game. When this card leaves the battlefield, uh, put it back. Under. Oh, into its owner's hand. 
That might be good, that might be bad, depending on what you get. Yeah, that's really still good though, just because you're like, hey, cool, tap my little dude that I don't care about, that yeah. I just played, play this. Yeah, play this. Take your thing, and, well, I guess it is good because the other ones come back in the field anyway, so like Regalios would trigger. So this, they have to cast it. Yeah. And it doesn't immediately go back in. Definitely playing in, in uh, Dark Alice if yeah. you run in. Agreed. Uh, next is the Dark Gaming Hall. It is a white and a black for an addition fairy tale. Tap, banish all light crystals and dark crystals. Your opponent chooses odd or even. Then reveal the top card of your deck. If its cost total cost doesn't match your opponent's guess, gain twice the number of light crystals and darkness crystals banished. This, and darkness crystals banished to pay this ability's cost. Yeah. This card doesn't feel worth it at all. Like, it really doesn't. Cool, you can get in a lot of extra stuff, or you could just not. Yeah. I mean, it's literally what it is, game blink, but it's just, it's not worth it. Maybe, yeah, and it's twice the number, so if you only do one light crystal because that's all you have left, you get two. Hooray. Yeah. And they get to see what's next. Not good. Defensive stance. It's a green and a white uh, quick cast. Quick cast major. Enter. If you don't control another card name, defense stance, cancel target spell. And then whenever another stance comes to play, banish this card for sure. Yeah, so it is the new Kaguya, but yep. it's only really for one dude and Arla. Yep. But it is what it is. It is what it is, exactly. Uh, definitely use useful. Yeah. Next is Disappearing Power. It is a red, white, and X. Remove all non-J ruler, non-magic stone entities with total cost X to your opponent controls from the game. This card is a very good functional reprint of uh, Lumia's Re Re Rebirth, I think. It, it's literally a like almost word for word reprint of that card. Yeah. It's just pay X, remove X, and it's nuts. That's ridiculous. And it's your opponent, so you don't have to worry about it on yeah. your side. It is total cost X, so you gotta make sure you do that, but you can also remember that X is zero, so if you need to remove tokens, you can. Yep, just for two, oh, why not? All right, Exorcist, or Exorcist of Serto. It's darkness, red, and one wizard. Pay 400 life, this card gain, deals 200 damage to each J slash resonator. 800, would this replace final battle for you? No. 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 It's neat. But it wouldn't replace it. Yeah. It's it's meh. Maybe in limited it can be really yeah, good. Yeah, limited it's cool. But uh, no. That's a lot of damage. Uh next is Fafnir the Stranger. He is a red, a black, black, and one for a 12-12 dragon. He's got flying mans. Enter, choose otter even. Destroy all other resonators with total cost matching your choice. Nice. Total cost zero counts as even. He's okay. He's pretty strong. So if in the right deck, he can be really, really strong. But he can also hurt you if you choose wrong. Because it so, kills all resonators. Doesn't care who they are. Yeah, so he can kill himself if you ever... No. Wait, wait, all, all other, other resonators. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. No, he doesn't kill himself. Yeah. I love this art <laughs> of every single bit of it. <laughs> all right, sorry. Faithless Summoner. It's a darkness and blue wizard. Uh, t X tap, gain control of target resonator with total cost X or as long as this card is rested. You may choose not to recover this card during recovery phase. And it is a 1-7. It's a 1-7, but it doesn't matter because, yes, I would play this card. Yeah, it's really it's strong really, really. you can take whatever you want whenever you want. Yeah. That's what makes it so good. You're like, oh, that, that dude's a 5-drop? I need him. I just... Please. Yeah, thanks. Please, every, please, madam, of all those cards. <laughs> Next is the Grand Cross Reincarnation. It is a blue Oof. and a white for a Sword Art Mage Art. Hold it there. Quick cast. Yes. As an additional cost to play this card, reveal a stranger from your hand. Choose two. Your opponent banishes a non-J ruler, non-magic stone entity. Put target stranger resonated from your graveyard into your hand. Save your deck for a Regalia, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. As you choose this option, choose an enter ability of the stranger resonator revealed to play this card. Perform that enter ability's effect. Choose targets for the selected ability if it needs one, and resolve the effects. So that's really cool just because you can be like pay to show uh, the, the stranger that shoots for 17 and be like, I kill that dude, take damage. Yeah. Now I'm going to play this dude because I can. Yeah, because I can. And it's a Sword Art Mage Art, so it's good in any deck that plays any of those things. Yeah, it's really, really ridiculous. And you can do it in all other decks too. If you have strangers in your hand, you can trigger and all that yeah. fun stuff. But Yeah, that's the only downside is you have to have a stranger in your hand, but... Oh well, so oh, be it. Yeah, and obviously, if you play Magna, it's gonna happen. Yeah, definitely build around good card. Yeah, 
Next is Hades. It's two blue, two black, 12 protective D. It's a 10-10. If an effect would increase attack or defense of resident as your opponent's control, it decreases that much instead. Nice. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's pretty neat. Yeah. So your pump spell does nothing. Does nothing. It hurts you. Thanks. So yeah. So I'm trying to think of like anything else, but uh, he's cool. But for four mana, I don't think I'd use him. Like it seems really hard to get him play and not. If die. need be, sideboard against Arla because all there's like right. Well, except the bird, but the well, no, never mind. It just doesn't matter. Because well, the other one, the two drop angel will die immediately. Yeah. I don't know. I don't uh, think he's worth it, really. It small. He's sideboard at best. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next is Honir, the Bishop God. He is a black and a white for a 7-8 stranger. Your opponent cannot play spells during your turn. Nice. Enter, your opponent banishes a non j ruler, non man magic stone entity. Yes. So yeah, this card is really, really strong because it doesn't care. Yeah. Can cancel my stuff, can <clears throat> no combat tricks, no nothing. Yeah. This card is awesome. Very good stranger to use. Yeah, definitely use it in your stranger deck. Leviathan, it's two white, two blue, quick cast, also a deity. It's a 14-14. Banish the light magic stone. Change the target of target. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. Banish the water magic stone. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target to this card. Uh, you can play a blue and a white, put a magic stone or a water stone from your graveyard into the field. Hell yeah. That's pretty cool just because he replaces the stone that he loses. Yeah. He's neat. He's neat. I don't know if he's worth it, but he's neat. A 14-14 uh, quick cast is pretty good. Limited, this dude's baller, but constructed, yeah. I don't know. Because you're kind of having to play other stuff. Because you have to flash a man, sack a lie stone. Your kill spell kills that instead. But then you can pay two to get it back. It, it's a hit or miss for this. Yeah, he definitely could be useful in constructed, but it'd just be a build out. Oh, yeah. Next is the Mad Pyromancer. He is a red and a black for a minion. He is a 6-4 quick cast, enter, destroy all damaged resonators. Sandstorm's in play, maybe. Also, that little three drop that we just talked about that pays four life to deal two to everything makes this card a lot better. <laughs> yeah, right. So you're just like, ah, cool, do that, do this. Ah, neat. Yeah. Let's clear the board. All the board, except for that little yeah. guy. Next one is Magic Stance. It's a green and a white Mage Art Quick Cast. Enter if you don't control another Magic Stance. Draw two cards for two. Not too bad. And then, of course, the other stances come in. Banish this card. Yeah. I mean, pay two to two at the end of turn. It's not too bad. Mm-hmm. Next is the Magic Storing Golem. He is a blue and a green for a machine. A 6-6. Six, six. Banish this card. Produce a blue and a green. I don't feel like this is worth it. No. It's new, neat, I guess. Kind of. I guess. If you need machines to come to play, but you still want to play something else, then you play this and sack it. But then just, the why play this? Then the why play it at all, right? Exactly. It just doesn't feel like Magician of the Veils, Savaria. It's red and a white wizard. Reveal the top card of your deck from the game. This game, this card gains plus 500 until in a turn. Play this ability only once per turn. So a two mana 10-8. It's yeah. pretty good. Uh, it's an aggro deck. Like, if you want to play aggro, go, go for this yeah. for sure. So you can do it in any, like, your turn, their turn, doesn't matter. It's yeah. pretty strong. And it works with the the Apostles, right? Because you remove... Yeah, it, it works really well with Lineth because you're all you're all about it. Yeah. But yeah, definitely worth constructed building around. Next is the Necromancer. She's looking pretty good. Yep. Uh, green, black, and a black for a minion. 7-7, seven, seven, remove all resonators and target opponents... Target player's graveyard from the game put a one counter on this card for each resonator removed this way nice neat nice so uh hey three mana get rid of your graveyard i get counters yeah because i'm big and it's a minion so it's easy for guilt that's pretty good sideboard for sure especially if they're gonna graveyard recursion day you'd be like no nope. oh yeah nidhog it's two white and two black i'm getting all the the big old dudes yeah it's, it's a 12 12 flying you game barrier yourself as a player Enter, look at the top card. Opponents, look at your opponent's hand, choose up to two cards, they remove them from game. When this card leaves the battlefield, put all cards from all removed areas that were removed by this card into the owner's hand. Oh, so, man. It's pretty neat. It's okay. It's, again, one of those, it's like kind of man. It's cool because you gain barrier. Yeah. That's about it. So you can't be targeted by some spells, but you can still get discarded, which is sad. Yeah. Uh, next is the Nightmare Knight. He is a black and a white for a fairy tale, 6-6. Six, six. 
Enter, choose up to two. Banish a light crystal if you do, look at the top four of your deck, reveal a fairy tale from among them and put it into your hand, then put the rest in the bottom of your deck in any order. Banish a darkness crystal if you do, target resonator gets minus 10, minus 10. I don't like it. And then whenever another fairy tale enters the battlefield in your control, you may return this card to its owner's hand. He's pretty cool. I don't know if he's worth all the time sink into putting him in and balancing him, but yeah. he's neat. I mean, if you have enough darkness crystals to be able to just start killing dudes over and over, yeah. He, he can be good. And just the art of how like 3D this tried to look. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. Like he's definitely a constructed build around, but that's about it. For sure. Alright, Paratrooper of the Genius. It's four blue and a green, machine human. Flying 12-12. You may pay a blue less to play this card for each machine you control. He can be okay. He's a machine human, and he can be one green. Real quick. Yeah, he's cool, but I don't... I don't, I, I really I don't know if he's uh, worth it. Yeah. I just don't. Like, it's neat. Well, you'd have to really build an aggro machine deck to put him into play for sure. But in the same regard, we already have Gwyver. He's a one man of 10 team that nobody's plays. It's true. He does the same thing. This is literally Gwyver, but nobody plays blue. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Next is the Royal Straight Flush. It is a black and a white for a mage art. Quick cast. Destroy target resonator. If this card is awakened, instead destroy all non-magic stone entities your opponent controls. Put all cards revealed by this card's awakening cost from your hand into the field. But. And then you have to reveal a Nightmare Knight, a King of Kings, a Save the Queen, a Mage Jack from your hand, and a Shadow X from your hand. So five cards you have to reveal for this card to be a getting the awakening and you just get to play them all for free. Yeah. So you're probably never gonna awaken this, but I mean, there's an off chance you can, but for the most part, it's pay two, kill a dude. Yeah. Which is pretty good which still. Which is still really decent, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'll still do that for two mana kill dude. As a mage art as well. Schrodinger himself. It's a darkness and white uh, addition, quick cast. Remove target regalia or resonator you control from the game, then put it in the field under your control, opponent's control. Oh, owner's control, sorry. That would have been really weird. So basically, blink something. Banish a light crystal, this card gains 10 10 resonator with drain and internal until end of turn. Banish a dark crystal, this card becomes a 10 10 resonator with bane and precision until end of turn. This card's really good. Yeah, this card is extremely busted. good. That's why it's a MR, for sure. Yeah, he does so much for you just because the main thing is he can blink a thing. That's like so, so powerful. A lot of people underestimate how strong that is, but you can blink out your regalia to re-tap it and be like, hey, cool, do some more stuff and do all the stuff. Or just dudes that do more abilities that come into play, just everything. Yeah. So oh, no, it does come into play rest. I'm sorry, you can't re-tap it, but whatever. But still. You still get more inner triggers on your ruler, yeah. so it's worth every bit of it. Agreed. Definitely constructed, definitely playing that card. Yeah. Next is the Shadow Swords Master. It is two white and three black for a shadow. 15, 15, first strike, precision, barrier, stranger. Okay. Oh, barrier, stranger. Yeah, barrier, stranger. Uh, you may pay a white and two black less to play this card if you control three or more light crystals and three or more dark crystals. Oof. Uh, enter, you may banish any number of uh, light and or dark crystals, draw a card for each light crystal banished, your opponent banishes a resonator for each dark crystal. So if you're playing Dark Alice, this is definitely a card you should probably play. Number one card. Because it gets a lot of value. Especially for two... It's probably definitely going to be two mana for a 15-15 first strike precision. Yeah. yeah, definitely really strong for constructed. Yeah. Next one is Sky Crusher. It's a darkness blue. J Resonators you control loses and cannot gain flying. It's a 6-7. Yeah. So it's it's man. If you go against Arla, that's perfect because you don't have to worry about all the stupid angels. But besides that, man. Yeah. Next up is the Soul Dealer. He is a white and a black for a fairy tale. 6-6. Six, six. Enter. You may search your deck for a card named Dark Gaming Hall and put it in the field. Tap. Look at the top two of your deck. Put them on top of the deck in the order. This card is trash, just like the card it goes against. Yep. But obviously with this, he rigs the game so you can win all the time. Because then they can... I know, but it's not but worth it's it. It's not worth it's it. It's so just bad. Just don't. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Swordsman of the Other World. It's blue and a white uh, quick cast. He has first strike, 7-7, seven, seven, meh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. meh. Yeah. Yeah, don't. It's okay. It's okay. It's limited, okay. Next is Sylvia, minion of Lapis, mm -hmm. the girl. She is a red and a green for a minion, Dragonoid. 
Uh, she's a 7-7 seven, seven Swiftness. Pay a Moon, this card gets plus 3, plus 0. Oh. And Limit Break, as long as you have Limit Break her, she gains the following abilities. This card gets plus 3, plus 3, flying, and whenever it attacks, it deals damage equal to its attack. Target J Resonator, your opponent controls. Seems good. I'll take a 2-mana 10-10 that shoots your board off. Yeah, yeah. I, this card is nuts for Gil Lapis. If you're playing Gil, you should be playing her. Even though it's completely off colors, but still really, really good. I mean, it is off colors, but his ability lets you play him for many whatever you want. Yeah. And it's kind of ridiculous. Like, she's so good. Super. All right. The next one is the final stance. It's all colors. It has Mage Art, Quick Cast. Play this ability only if you control one of the other stances. Enter. If you don't control another final stance, take an extra turn after this one. Yay. Yeah, that's pretty good. <clears throat> yep, I'll take free, free turns. That's it. Uh, next, the Origin oh. of the Seven Lands. It is one of each color, in addition. You pay one, reveal this card from your hand, reveal a card you own from outside the game, and keep it revealed until the end of the game. Produce one will of an attribute shared with that card. Play this ability only during your turn, only once per turn, and only if you didn't play activate abilities of this card already. Enter. If you if you own cards named Faria, Melgus, Persia, Valentina, Machina, Rizard, and Arla, which is the seven, and they are all revealed outside the game for each for each of them, put a Resonator token copy of their J Ruler side into the field without copying the J Ruler type. You may pay zero to play God's Arts of abilities your J Ruler. So, if you get to turn seven, getting to do this, yeah, you get to be awesome, cause you're like cool dude, lots of things. Otherwise, this card is not so good. I mean, it can happen because it literally gives you the mana back so you don't lose anything to do it. So it's kind of worth it in that regard. Because yeah. it produces one will shared with that card. But I, I just don't know. Just... Old school Force Will with actual old Valentina, this card's busted. Yeah. Because she automatically reveals all of them, so you don't care. But we'll this, see. I don't know. I want I want this card to be cool. I'm gonna try it because this card's hilarious yeah. and I love it. This but... is definitely a brewer's like, yes, let's try this. Let's yeah. See how, yeah if no. we can make I this like work. the idea of it, but I don't know if it's gonna work. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah. The World of Dark Alice. It's a two black and a white quick cast mage art. Choose one, gain two light crystals and two dark crystals. Draw a card. Not too bad. Your opponent banishes a regalia. Search your deck for a darkness regalia and reveal it and put it in your hand. Shuffle your deck. Then each player chooses a Resonator they control. They banish all Resonators, but the chosen Resonator. This card's so good. Really good. Three mana, you lose a thing, I'm gonna go get one. Yeah, like, yeah. what? Thanks. That's so strong. And yeah, definitely do this. Yeah, playing Dark Alice, you definitely play this. You could honestly play this and not Dark Alice if you're still playing Black White. So yeah. it's really good. Uh, next is Titania. She is a white, green, and two for a 10-10 quick cast flyer. Enter, put two 2-2 two, two light fairy tokens with flying into play. Rest target, rest two recover resonators you control. This card gains buried. Okay. It's neat. It's not too bad. It protects itself with the two little dudes, yeah. but I don't know. It's cool. That's quick cast, so you can play little tricks and do a control deck for sure. And it could be the end game, but I don't know. I don't know. Unknown Mother Goose. <clears throat> it's a darkness and a white uh, regalia. Mythic, at the end of your turn, gain a light crystal or a dark crystal, so it just produces it constantly. Tap, produce two wheels of any combination of a light or dark. Spin this only to play God's Arts, Fairy Tales, Shadows, or Mage Arts. So basically, it can play your deck. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's a regalia. You need them, and that's what they do. And it plays your Fairy Tales and Shadows, yeah. and it's ridiculous. Next is Velsavaria, the field of the final battle. He is a red and a white. For an addition, enter. <clears throat> you may search your deck for a card named Caduceus or Genesis and put it in the field and shuffle your deck. You may pay the attribute cost of 12 protective deities with any will. <laughs> so there's a whole lot of new protective deities that they've shown, and this is really cool for those because you're just like, hey, cool, play this card. Yeah. You play all these dudes. Because you play this turn two and you're just like, cool, I'm going to play all these things because I can. And it's okay. Next one is Veri <clears throat> Veteran Warrior of Valhalla. It's two red and a white human, 7-7. Seven, seven. This card gains plus one, plus one for each card in your removed area. Meh. Yeah, it's not really worth it. No. It does nothing else but that. Yeah. No. Next is Zane, the warrior of Condemnation. He is a 
black and a green quick cast 8-8 eight, eight stranger with Bane. Mm -hmm. Interior, draw a card for each resonator put into the graveyard from the field this turn. It's... It's okay. It's okay. It's not really the best, but it's cool. In like, fact, if he's a no more dude, I would say he's good. But he's a stranger, so you have to get him first, and then yeah. all this has to happen. Yeah, he's neat. Quick cast is the only reason he's any kind of good, because you can flash them before all your dudes die, but otherwise it's kind of me. Yeah, yeah. And the next one is Ziz. It's a blue and a white, or blue and a green. He's a 12 protective deity, 7-7 seven, seven, flying. Additions and regalias you control gain barrier. Tap produce one will of any attribute. Oh, this is definitely for Magda yeah. immediately. This dude is really, really good. Yeah. Very, very good. Uh, that is it for multicolor, and then we're going to go into the colorless. Well, colorless first card we got is Genesis, the Regalia. It is mythic. If your J ruler isn't Magna, this card enters field rested. Tap, produce one will of any attribute. Spin this will only to play God's Arts, Strangers, 12 protective, 12 protective deities, Sword Arts, or Mage Arts. So really good. Yeah. So it's free mana. Play this and get it and just do things. It's so powerful and ridiculous all at the same time. Yeah, it gets pretty crazy. Yudrasil, Heroic Spirit of the World Tree. It's a uh, one colorless, and it's a Mythic Rare. So enter, search your deck for a regular that sh shares an attribute with the will you paid to play this card. Reveal it, and put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Tap, produce one will of any attribute, spin this only to play Regalia. Super powerful. Yeah. Everyone's gonna play this card forever. Yeah, it's it's one mana to go make sure you have your regalia that you want in your hand, and that's super strong. I guess the except for Genesis, right? Because it's yeah. colorless. Yeah. But that's okay. Sure. So be it. So be it. Uh, that is actually it for colorless. We're gonna go over the stones. First stone we have is Black Moon's Memoria, which is the uh, black and the moon mana. So this is how you make moon, and Gil Lapis is really going to be the one using this. And the art's fantastic. Yeah. Jesus, that really works. And of course we have the Magic Stone of Heaven's Rift, which is the white and darkness for Alice. Uh, next is Ruler's Memoria, which is back, which is awesome because this card's crazy good. If you don't control a regalia, this card is field rested. Tap, add one of any color. Don't care. Do it. Play Sweet. it. Sweet. You have free regalia with Magna, so you don't care. Yeah. And then that's it. That is it for the set, guys. It is going to be a super fun set to play and brew with. I am really excited to, to mess with all the crazy cards. Yeah. Mainly my boys back, so I'm definitely going to be playing Gil Lapis. That's what it is. And we'll see how much this destroys the meta. <laughs> yeah. How powerful all these cards are, really. Yeah, there's a whole lot of quick casts that came out and a whole lot of crazy things, so we're going to see what happens. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see y'all again next time as we go. Goodbye. Bye. Also, guys, make sure you hit that like button down below, then subscribe to our channel, and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. And we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Uh, thank you, Dwayne Higgs. And thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.